We're here in Monte Carlo for the Rendezvous de September. For AMBS TV, I'm Richard Banks. And I'm joined now by Bob Breville, CEO of Predicat. Bob, welcome. Hello, Richard. Nice to see you. Great to have you with us. So back in Monte Carlo for the first time in a few years, what's the message that you're bringing with you this year? Well, we're talking about the litigation environment in the United States and really about how much the rise of litigation finance has transformed that environment. The estimate Swiss Re has for the amount of litigation finance that's happened really in the last few years, possibly much of it since the last time we were at Monte Carlo, is as much as 20 to $30 billion invested and growing every year. And it's transforming what types of claims insurers are typically seeing. And in particular, we're seeing a lot more mass torts at the amount of two to three per year. And we are seeing uh, much more large-scale, long-duration litigation. So what the risk is, is that that's going to increase aggregation for insurers. And also, the increase in latency puts insurers at increased risk of adverse reserve developments. So one of the big topics here in Monte Carlo this week has been inflation. And uh, that obviously plays a big role as well. What can you tell us about inflation? Well, in liability lines, obviously, since the claims are paid out over multiple years, then you have concentrated risk from inflation. So if you combine the fact that there is litigation finance, which really is what's driving what they call social inflation, and at the same time, actual price inflation, then you've got you know really two of the three components of a perfect storm. <laughs> so what, how does that play out in the longer term then? In the longer term, it makes the liability lines necessary to have new types of risk management, I think. And in particular, we're arguing that it's important that they incorporate more exposure-based approaches to reserving and pricing and the like. Exposure meaning you're contemplating and quantifying and considering the emerging risks that are in your portfolio and not just the past history associated with those accounts. So we've seen a, a lot of uh, development in casualty modeling. You're obviously very heavily involved in that. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, about 10 years ago when we started, there was no such thing as casualty modeling. And people would say to us, you know, what is a casualty cap model? And it's really getting to the point now where I think the area has been accepted by the industry as not only something that they want to adopt, but something that the industry really needs to adopt in order to be able to manage the new emerging risks. Emerging risks? Tell us a bit about some of those. Well, the biggest emerging risk that we're worried about and talking about at the conference is what they call PFAS. That's the poly and perfluorinated chemicals. And you'd know them as such things as Teflon and Scotchgard. But they are also called these days the forever chemicals. And litigation over the forever chemicals is accelerating in the United States and globally. We estimate that the largest of the, the polyfluorinated and perfluorinated chemicals, is, which is called PFOA, and also that's Teflon, um, that one could potentially result in litigation just by itself of about $15 billion. And that's expected. It could be much larger if things go particularly adversely. So that's one that you've already identified. Are there any others perhaps on the horizon? Well, there are, is an entire pipeline of emerging risks on the horizon. There are some that are just newly emerging in litigation. One that's newly emerging in litigation that we are tracking closely is the litigation over addictive software design. So there's concern that in recent years, there's obviously been a big increase in teenage depression and in suicide among teenagers, and that there is a connection between this and the way in which software products, internet software products, like social media or internet gaming, are addicting children, and that that is what's driving their increased depression and suicide. So there's been 32 cases recently that are attempting to hold companies such as Meta or TikTok or Snap liable for that. And that litigation could develop into something considerably larger as well. Bob, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. For AMBS TV, I'm Richard Banks.